Yeah, man, world famous DJ Clue Desert Storm, the legendary. First of all, this is the first time on my show. I knew this dude for like 25 years, probably, man. Welcome Jermaine Dupri to the show, man. What's up, man? Yeah, he's been holding out. What's up with it? <laughs> New little studio. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? See, all you got his name up in letters and... Got to do something, man, for us over. You know what I mean? Where's the, what's, what's, what, where's the question mark? The question mark kind of got retired a little bit because I'm trying to, you know what I mean, go away from just basing it on myself and making it like, you know what I'm saying? Entertainment company. I thought that you was your saying? logo, though. The question mark. Yeah, you yeah, have yeah. a chain with the question mark on it. I still got it, man. Still What's got going it. On? Is no, this man. this guy's? Do you, you did this? <laughs> oh, okay, man. All right. All right. So what's up, JD, man? Yo, first of all, I just want to say, man. Um, I just feel like you know, what I'm saying being Jermaine Dupri, you don't get all the respect that you do. You know, what I'm saying the legendary stuff that you've done. I mean, starting from you know, just like the beginning. And 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 doing stuff like Mariah Carey and Usher and all the stuff you've done, man. Do you feel like people kind of sleep on you in a way, kind of? Um, yeah. I mean, you could say it. No, nah, I mean, I, I said it for you, it, though. Well, no, nah, but it's. I think it's it's a it's a twofold situation. I think I think people do sleep, but at the same time, I think people don't see enough of what I am to want to pay attention we're in, a, we're in a super copycat world right now like we in a world where people don't pay attention to they only pay attention to things that look like something that somebody else is doing right, right? like I, I was i was we was coming we was coming through vegas leaving vegas for the fight and i was watching i was walking through the airport looking at all these girls that was coming into Vegas or leaving Vegas, they all look the same. Like, every one of them, they all wear the same little pants. They all got the same little glasses, the same little sandals. It's all the same. Like, they don't even want to go buy a different bag. It's all, if they ain't get a Birkin, they don't even <laughs> want a bag. It's like the same, you know what I mean? So it's, I feel like when you have somebody that's not doing the same thing that everybody else is doing, People just don't, they don't, it's no need for, they don't even talk about it. It's, it gets lost. It, it shouldn't get lost, but it gets lost in this new world and new way that we think now. I feel like it's because of the internet, man. I feel like it's because of social media. And it's like, you know, before, like, you know, when we were coming up, it was, you couldn't really see what was going on, like, visually, unless it came on TV or something like that. You know, yeah. now it's like, you know, every minute on your feed, you see different things and, just yeah, but on I, internet. I, I still, I also think it's about, it's like stats. It's like the same thing, like, with LeBron last night. You know, when you do something that has never been done in this era, it don't actually even feel like it's never been done, right? Right. So I feel like that's 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 partially part of my career. Like, there's so much stuff that I've done that's never been done before until I did it, and it still ain't been done since I did it. That it's just like it don't it don't pe nobody else goes into that pocket to even talk about it. Right. right, even like last night, LeBron did twenty and twenty. This is his first time doing this. I don't know who else has done it. I don't even think I, who else did that. It's a couple of people, huh? Yeah, a couple of people did twenty I mean, and twenty. It's yeah. okay, but I'm saying it's the first time for him, right? So right. he was. I saw an interview on the way over here. He was just saying like, he. I guess it means something, right? But it do mean something. But even to him, it feels like nobody's gonna make it. Nobody's gonna make him believe that he did something amazing. But right. for his career, that's the first time it's ever happened. I think, you know, so, I mean, long story short, I think, yeah, people don't give me my respect, but at the same time, like I said, I think I, I dance in a box that's just not, it's not a bunch of people that go in that area. Now, do you think it's it's partially because you're from Atlanta and that, you know, before, you know, Atlanta's music game came to fruition and it was, you know, where it is now, like, before it was just really, like, L.A., New York, and, you know what I'm saying, and they put the South in a in a in a in a box, I feel like at at one point, you know. Yeah, what I'm saying? I mean that, that has a, that has a lot to do with it, you know. Um, but even with that, even with that, still, I don't. I I think like even when we talk about that, like like when 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 the Source Awards was here in New York, I was already on your mixtape. Like you know what I'm saying? Like sure. I was I was in the mix of what the city was doing. So. When he said that, didn't nobody look at me. I was in the audience. Right. You know what I mean? I feel like they, you know, Outkast winning that award, it put a light on them. But as far as the South goes, I was already in the box. So that's what I'm saying. So even with that, I don't think people like, 
they don't even put me in that same box. They don't put me in the southern box because I was already making records that was outside right. of that box, right? So, I, I, like I said, I just think it's a, like I said, I think it's a, and I think people forget that sometimes. I think people forget, like, the things that I was chasing, nobody in Atlanta cared about. Like, right. I wanted to be the first Nick from Atlanta to be on a Clue mixtape. And the, and the first song on a mixtape, this was, like, my goals, you was you first of all, Jermaine Dupri. Let's be clear about something. Was the first one to bring me to Atlanta. The first time I ever touched down Atlanta is because Jermaine sent for me. You know, what I'm saying we went to the crib. Um, I feel like your crib, your crib is a, a your neighborhood is a directly across from where Rick Ross's crib is at now. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He it's, bought Holyfield House. So yeah, it was a Holyfield right, House. Yeah, right. Yeah. I remember that. Right. Yeah. So yeah, when when I came to Jermaine's house, man, I ain't gonna lie, it was motivational because I thought I had a lot of cars. You know what I'm saying? Until I walked to J- J- Jermaine's crib and he had the new Range Rover, the new Benz, the new Ferrari, the new this, the new that. And I was like, yo, this dude got about 10 cars in his yard. I'm like, I ain't never seen no one. I ain't seen no one do like that t- till now. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you've been doing that back in the days, man. Yeah. I feel like you was ahead of your time. Like, with the, you know, producing, the writing, the DJing. I mean, that's, that's, like I said, that's what it is. I think it's just like, like I said, I think it's, it's, I was, you know, moving at a pace, like not knowing, you know what I mean? Like I, I even, I even had to like correct my, like my mindset the other day because I was thinking about the songwriters hall of fame. And when I went and got inducted into the songwriters hall of fame, I realized that they didn't even speak about me. They just spoke about their institution, but they didn't speak about like, my kind going into the into, in, into the Hall of Fame had never been in there. Even with Jay, with Hov going in first, that's a rapper. He's a rapper. Right. As far as a songwriter that's written songs for rappers and singers, I was the first my kind to ever go into that. Now Pharrell and Missy's in there, right? But I was the first of that. They never even talked about that. That wasn't even like a piece of the headline. I don't even think they thought about that. They just like put me in the list of saying the second rapper to be inducted into the songwriters hall of fame you know what i mean that that's not my title that's that could be missy title that's not my title right and that's right. not even missy's title but that's what i'm saying it's like the things that i the the real you know my real stats are not comparable to anybody else's that's and it's not from a me being cocky standpoint i think people get that they think i'll be doing being cocky like when i said that to puff it's like it's no real comparison between me and Puff. And it's not because I'm like being cocky. I'm saying he we just don't compare on in stats. It just not it's that it don't look like if you put it on paper, it don't even add up. Now, how do you feel when people bring that up about you and Puff man doing the verses and you know what I'm saying like how I mean you- I, I listen, I love it because like I said, at the end of the day, if you look at it on paper it don't add up. So it's not even a, you know, I, and I, I feel like I want people to, you know me, I want, I want, I want people to see it. I want you to see it, how it don't stack up. I was thinking about this last night. Like if he plays, I need a girl. If we's just doing this and he played, I need a girl. I got 10 of them songs, right? I got 10. I need a girls to go against his one. This is what I'm saying. Like, it's just, it don't stack up. Now, do you feel like it? Do you feel like it's different kind of artists? Because you know, a versus is real strategic. It is. You know what I'm saying? It's very, it's very strategic. But I mean, at the same time, it's 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 super strategic if you take control of versus, right? What I feel like when I watched Kiss, he took control of the stage. He took control of the moment. He took control of what an MC is supposed to do. And he did what I thought Cam would have done. Right. And and they played too cool. Like it's this is stage. You can't be too cool for school. This is this is what it is. It's like DJing, right? When the, if you if you battling a guy and you trying to be too fly and he come up there and take his shirt off and use his tongue on the crossfit, he's gonna win. It's not it doesn't matter how good you <laughs> are. You you just allowed right. this guy to out show you so I I feel like it's just about it's about it's about showmanship and I feel like I feel like it's so many people out there that don't really understand the real writing producing person that I am 
that once I start showing that you you just like right you have to be in that space to battle me that's all I'm saying right right if you got to tell somebody else to do it you it don't work like that <laughs> I, I mean they always try to put in comparison they always try to put DJ Drama versus DJ Clue in the versus that's that's what how I I don't I, I don't know like you know what I'm saying I mean like, well listen I is is drama the the modern day DJ Clue? I would say yes. Um, I don't know anybody else has had a mixtape that meant as much culturally in the late two thousands as much as you meant to us in the early nineties or whatever. I just feel like 90s. I just feel like me and drama do different things. Like you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, I, I mean, but I'm saying I'm I'm saying. It's it's safe to say that the drops, the laughing, the, the talking, the the, the Monati echo chamber, all of this came from you. So I'm saying, if you listen to his mixtape, it don't sound like a clue tape to you. I, I mean, mean you, might not, you might not say that because it's you, but I'm saying right, right. in in you know, in theory, it sounds like a clue tape. I just think it's different because. I feel like the, a lot of the drama tapes were like based on one artist, yeah. and my mixtapes were based on various artists, various artists, freestyles, like different stuff. Like you know what I mean? Like some of them. Like, I mean, I think that's the only thing that's different that he concentrated on one artist, right? That's that, that, and that made it like a one, like almost like an album, right? Um, but like, I'm saying the 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 actual design of the format, that yeah, 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 the yeah, format yeah. came yeah, from you, right, right? Right. And and I I think that people, you know. I was having this conversation last night. Matter of fact, I was talking about you last night. I had a barber come over from Queens. Okay. He's from Southside. Okay. And um, and we was just talking about how, you know, like like we was just having this overall conversation about how people compare different things, right? And it was like, and in saying that, I don't think that these guys, these young kids, I don't know if they knew or even heard a Clue mixtape. They might have heard what's on the radio what they hear now, but I'm saying to be in the fire of being on the streets and hearing like this car go by and this car clue. Like it's so crazy. Like, cause I just asked you before we even start when we about the, the echo, I mean about the, the um, question mark. The question mark. It's crazy because I'm like, can I tell this story? Sure, yeah. So Biggie came to my house. <laughs> and we gotta talk about this guy. Keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> So Biggie comes to my house, and this this is a everybody's listening. Clue didn't show his face. Nobody knew who Clue was. I think that's why it was the whole Clue clueless situation. Hey, that's exactly what it was. And question mark. And he used to call himself the question mark man, and nobody knew who he was. You know this story? Oh, you know the story. So some kind of way, Clue got a hold of. Unbelievable before it was supposed to come the out. The original version the of The original unbelievable from Biggie. And Biggie just happened to be at my house the day that this happened. And Biggie was furious. He was going crazy. I'ma kill this guy Clue. When I find <laughs> this dude, I'ma kill him. I'ma kill him. And and it was amazing to me because I'm like, no, but they, they live here and they never seen this guy before. Like it was like I actually felt like I was watching like Spider Man or like one of these <laughs> one of these comic book uh, shows because Biggie was completely like I never seen this guy. When I find him, I'm gonna kill him. How did he get it? And it was like a whole two three hours of a situation. And when I talk about your mixtapes, I feel I think about that energy. Like that's an energy that's a, so amazing. Um, to just have, to know that you had a mixtape that was that powerful, and a, you had a brand that was that powerful. How does that feel? Like, cause that ain't we don't have that in hip hop no more. It, it was it was definitely a good thing. It was a moment. The closest moment I could think in this era was the the Friday night freestyles when me and Fab was doing that. And every Friday night, I had people beating up my Twitter, like, "Yo, what time is the freestyle dropping?" People were, like, if it dropped after midnight, people were mad at me. You know what I'm saying? Like. So how did you rectify the situation with Big? This is me. I want to interview you about this. Like, how did right, this, so, what happened? All right, so, so the way, first of all, half the Bad Boy staff is, is from my neighborhood. Mm, 
Oh. You know what I'm saying? Uh-oh. Like, you oh, know, ha- you know, Harv Pierre. Yeah. The Ryan Garcia and, move. <laughs> and, you know, all them guys, they they know, they kind of know, they kind of knew what I looked like kind of vaguely, you know what I'm saying? From the neighborhood, whatever, whatever. And at the time, I had I had just started working at RCA Records. I was working at RCA Records at the time. I was under, working under Steve Stout. And oh. it just so happened that Steve wasn't in and Puff called the, called the office phone. And I was like, yo, I'm like, yo, we need to chop it up. He was like, yo, who was this? I'm like, this is Clue. He was like, what? He was like, oh, so Puff never saw you either? Nah, he, oh, never, he, never, he never knew who this I was. This is a whole documentary. Yeah, this it, story it in itself is a documentary. It, it definitely is. So so Puff, uh, we talked on the phone. He's like, yo, we need to chop it up, whatever, whatever, whatever. And we ended up squashing it, man. That's how I ended up getting squashed. Because like me and Puff talked, and like I guess he spoke to Big and was like, we came to understand, like, yo, just going forward, let's try to have this type of relationship where... You know what I'm saying? If so something, that, uh, if something uh, falls in your lap. So then the bad boy tape came after that, huh? Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. The bad oh. boy tape came after that. Oh. Um, and you know, like you know, we worked it out. Like you know, like like grown men. Like you know, what I'm saying it was a good thing. But he was definitely was he, he definitely went on the radio. Oh no, he was and, and, and wild out. I was, was like, yo, when, clue when I see you, it's on. Oh no, he was <laughs> furious. But did you did you like what was your mindset? Because I'm saying that that feels like it feels like the same space that we was in that's why i only bring it up because for you to put a song you knew that 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 was going to do that i mean i had a feeling i mean that, that i mean that was the whole point of having the exclusives like you know what i mean like at the time like i just knew like you know having these exclusive songs is what people wanted to because because i started out doing the r&b blends and then it went to you know the all hip-hop takes so when i had the exclusive i was like yo i got i gotta let this fly yeah why wouldn't i you know yeah okay all right Let's let's talk a little bit about uh about Jermaine Dupree, man. We're gonna get back to the biggie because I have another thing to talk to you about. <laughs> but um let's talk about the project with you and Currency, man. How'd that come about, man? Um, so he did a song where he wrote a song called Jermaine Dupree, and um the boy B Dot reached out to me to see if I had heard it. And I saw it on Twitter, and I, you know, when you see your name and somebody and a rapper saying your name. I mean, for me, I'm like, oh shit, what did I do? Like, what, what's, <laughs> what, what's prompted this? So I'm thinking, I'm, I'm thinking it was all like not good. So I actually wasn't even trying to hear it, cause I'm just thinking like, you know, someone's trying to sh- throw shots. Yeah, somebody's throwing shots or saying something that got something, you know, bad involved. And then um, he, he was telling me, nah, you should check it out, blah blah blah. So then I listened to it. It's crazy because he don't say my name till like almost the end of the song right and i'm and i'm listening to the record and i'm like why is this called jermaine dupree what what what's the you know what's the whole thing behind this and then he gets to the part where he talks about mtv cribs in the song and i was like oh all right i so so i was so like thrown off like damn i can't believe somebody wrote a song called it me so i hit him up and i'm like you know least i could do is make a record for you you know right let's make a record let's see what happens and we made a record and it turned into a whole album and then it turned into us being a collective to doing it together so that's dope man yeah D- did you do all the production on the album yeah oh that's dope man yeah i like that i'll be seeing you are on instagram like you know saying in the lab creating yeah you got i mean you, you you do it the right way man you got the keyboard players you got the guitar player you got the writers with you you write, you produce, so it's it's like you know what I'm saying. It's like yeah, it's like a camp. On, yeah, like the whenever you you know, depending on what type of music I'm making, um, you know, I, I was not, I learned that too in my in my later life. I I hated musicians, I hated having guitar players in the studio. I didn't like none of that at first, you know. Um, I used to think that I used to make like make rap music, water it down, right? Like, and and it was uh, not not realizing that it's just really a, how you mix the records. But I used to hate all of that. And then I just started, like, realizing how special it was to have these guys be able to just be like, yo, come over here and play this real quick. It's a, it's a different game. And makes it intricate. Yeah, yeah. Now, I want everyone at home to hit Jermaine Dupri on Twitter and Instagram and ask him, where is the secret Biggie song on a cassette at his house that he would never, ever give me? I might have called this dude for about seven years trying to get this this song he played for me with him and Biggie had the cassette. He played it for me, and oh. I tried to get it from him, and he would not let me take it. And oh. then seven years, eight think, years down the line, I called him, and I'm like, yo, where is this cassette at? And he's like, yo, you know what? I cannot find it. I said, damn it, man. 
I can find it. I, mean, I know. I got it. I mean, I was holding it on. You know what I mean? I'm what holding, you, bro? I'm, I'm holding it. I'm holding it. The man for, passed you know, away 20 some years ago. Don't got to do with him passing away. I don't. I don't I, that's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't want nobody to think I'm trying to do anything that has anything to do with him. G me gaining anything off big from that, from nah, that. Nah, man. You know, you can yeah, yeah, I mean, put it out and give and give the proceeds to his family. Yeah, man. yeah but I, I mean, you know, I, I told Puff I'm gonna drop it if we ever do a versus. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. That'll be that'll be me because that's on me. That's on me. I'm mad I forgot the verses on that joint, man. Yeah, yeah, nah. I, um, uh, yeah. I got a whole I got a whole record too before that we did before money or anything. I told him about that too. I'm like, you know, I got a song that you know nobody's ever really heard. We can we gotta do the podcast. We got too many <laughs> stories. I can tell you the story about when Jermaine Dupree did money or anything, and him and Jay Coney from his crib, and he like, yo, clue. I'ma mix this. I got it for the tape. This song, so he like, yo, just nah, just listen. And he, and he plays money, money and thing on the phone for me. And I'm like, yo, this is crazy. Like, by the way, I didn't care about nothing else with that song, besides being on Clue mixtape. That's how I want. That's how for anybody young that don't understand how serious this guy's tape was to, me, or at least to me, I made that song specifically to be. The first song on your mixtape. I didn't care about radio. I didn't care about nobody else calling me from Columbia. By the way, by the way, that was a thing. If, yeah, you, was, if, you, had, thing. if you had the number one slot on Clue Tape, that was a thing. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, but he was to try to pay for that. I was like, nah, I can't. I can't do that. I can't take your money. But it was even more because I'm from Atlanta. Like that's what I'm saying about. For sure. That's what I'm saying about about when you do things. Um. Like I was doing at that time when I did that, no rapper, it was no Jeezy, it was no Ludacris, it was no Outkast, it was nobody that was trying to be on Clues mixtape, and I don't think people understand that. Like it was no Ti, right? When people be talking about who put Atlanta on the map, I don't try to take credit for it, but I'm saying in that realm of hip hop, you, I ain't gotta say it, you can say it, you could tell these people who else just, was listen, calling listen, you from listen, Atlanta just for, saying just, I wanted to be. Just for the record, I did. <laughs> T.I.'s sampler mixtape. I did Usher's sampler mixtape before he came out. Ludacris is from Milan too. He was the, he was on Clue tape before anyone heard of him. So it was like it was like it, it was definitely like a thing. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah, nah, nah. I mean, but that 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 your your mixtape. I made that like a part of like my whole promotion for Life in 1472. You know what I mean? That was my before Columbia got the record and with the promo promo team. I'm like we go. I'm giving this the clue first. And, I appreciate and, that, and, man. And and they didn't. They was like, "What does that mean? Like you gonna give it the clue? Are we gonna make money? How? We, you know what I'm saying? It was like this was a space where like nobody at record record companies knew nothing about the power of a mixtape. For sure, right? And that's 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 really when I think about this is how crazy like hip hop is. And as we celebrate the 50th, I hope that you know. This type of education is being brought as opposed, you know, um, as opposed to everybody just saying we're gonna do a million concerts and all. Like they did a, they did a bunch of stuff. I haven't gotten invited yet, so I'm waiting. To, yeah, they got. I, they I might just do my, I might just do my own. I, I know yeah, you, you, do, you should have a, you should have a DJ Clue seminar to like show people the timeline and how important um, the mixtape was to the locks, the mace. Fab to me, like Mace, period. Like, like you didn't never how heard many, Mace. You could never how hear many Mace of your top you twenty-five <laughs> list got, was on Clue Tape first, yeah, right? Yeah, you could if you if you thought you heard Mace anywhere besides Clue, you got to be crazy. That's a fact. Like, you know what I mean? So I I feel like I feel like that. Yeah, you should definitely do something that that shows. A timeline so people can understand the importance because I feel like that goes into like you asking me that question. I'll never really give people these timelines so they can actually see this. They they see it in social media and they like what 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 you know what I mean? Like I remember when somebody compared Ray Shrimmer to Crisscross and I'm like and I and I wasn't like I think I spoke too soon without realizing understanding how wild the internet is. Right. Like so then people took it like oh you just you just mad because they the new crisscross, and I'm like, they don't understand. Yeah, you, yeah, you have to be there. Yeah, you gotta be there. <laughs> yeah. Now you have your own 
fiftieth hip hop celebration coming up. Yeah, well, kind of sort of thirtieth. Okay, thirtieth. Well, right. no, I have two. I'm doing Essence Fest. Okay, where I'm where I'm you know I'm celebrating the fiftieth of hip hop, basically right, in I heard about the that. South, right? With me, Ti, um, Ludacris, Lil John, Gucci Man, um, who I'm forgetting? Oh, who? Who? Big Boy. Oh, Big Boy from Outkast. Um, yeah. it, must, it must be hard to get Andre 3000 out the house, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, kind of, kind of, kind of, well, kind of so. I, I feel like I could have done it if I, like, really, really went. You can go knock on his door. And have a conversation <laughs> with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people's had a lot of conversations with him. But, you know, it's like me and Andre used to live in the same apartment building. He used to live up under me. And, and we stayed in the same, just say the same apartment building. So he and I have a different like relationship conversation when we talk to each other right 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 yeah now you have something in new york going on too though um yeah um webster hall on the floor right. um me and currency performing and um i never i never been to webster hall even like been there so it's that's crazy to even go there and then i've seen you know i've seen so many shows i think frank sinatra recorded one of his albums there right right like it, Wait, weren't you at the jay-z show there no nah, nah. oh uh-uh. okay um I saw it, so that's what I'm saying. I, to to know that we can play in a, you know, a legendary place like that, I'm I'm pretty excited about that. That's you dope, know? man. I ain't performed in New York. I don't think since me doing a performance since the tunnel. That's crazy. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. I I was thinking about the the uh, Welcome to Atlanta verse, man, when, when, by the Garden. Oh yeah. That was legendary. Yeah. Yeah. Standing on top of the Garden. That was legendary. Yeah. Nobody thought that was possible either. He's like, they didn't just do that. That was inside the treatment. We're going to stand on top <laughs> of the garden. <laughs> like, people thought that was oh, like, that man. just happened to be something we did. That was in the treatment. Nah, we should stand on top of the garden. Yeah. All right, man. Give me your top five list. Jermaine Dupree's top five MCs, man. And feel free to go all in if you want to. I can't do five because I, I don't, I, I think that I can't do top five because I feel like I, and I, feel, I don't feel like nobody could do top five because if you start talking about emceeing and people that actually rap, um, people always, people always get offended with these lists. Yeah, but but I, I and that's because I don't think they listen to rapping. I think they listen to names as opposed, you know, because that's that's what you're saying. You're saying name names. Since people it, it, start thinking about the names, when I first, when as soon as I start thinking about rapping and how I got into lyricism. Rakim and Big Daddy Kane automatically are right there at the top of my list, right? It's just because these are the guys. Me listening to Big Daddy Kane, um, and being in Brooklyn with Chad, and being right around the corner from Fort Greene Projects, and I, that's all I heard was Big Daddy Kane, right? Right, and I so so for me. Rock him and Big Daddy Kane, they on my list. So then it's only like three, you know what I mean? So then it's then it's and then it's big and then it's Jay and then it's um That's what I'm saying at that point. Like it's, it's no, it's that you can't the list don't it don't make sense. See, you know what I mean? It's here's, just, how, here's how I feel, man. I feel like, and I'm gonna say this, I've said this in a couple interviews, man. I feel like someone like Jermaine Dupri is warranted to talk about these lists. It's a lot of these lists that come out. People who talk about these lists, they just aren't qualified, bro. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. And even like that, like, I can't... If you don't I know music even, for I real, for real, I, you're I not qualified, bro. I can't leave Murder off. I can't leave Mur- Mur- Murder... was one of the illest rappers I have ever heard. From your tapes? Just for real, like... And, and I... I know Murder and Mace is two different people because the way he rapped on your mixtapes compared to the way he came out <laughs> is completely separate. But, right. this, I mean, he's still the same person. But I'm saying lyrically, when we talk about lyrics, it's hard to do a top five because there's so many people that, you know, and I you know, and I think a lot of times when people say, why is Jay always on everybody's list? They ain't even heard Jay mixtapes, like Jay doing verses on mixtapes and Jay going to the radio and crazy doing what he was doing. So it's like, if you really into rapping, Right, um, it's like like I said, it's, it's it's always hard for me to do that because like you can't leave. I think Rock Kim, to me, Rock Kim changed the whole format of rap. Period. Like he's the guy that made people start thinking they was 
spiritual, lyrical, miracle. He's that guy. Yeah, yeah. Like, he the one that made you start looking in the dictionary and trying to grab <laughs> words and put it together. That's a right? fact. And then big then Kane and but then you know then you got Slick Rick and so many it's too many rappers that's just Coogee like really rap. really good. Coogee rap, yeah, was, Coogee rap was the first drug dealer rapper that I know of. That's a fact. Uh, that was actually talking about selling drugs, right? Um, so I, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, you can't. It's and then you know then you got to go to the south and you got Andre three thousand that he never put it, he never put out his own album, and he's by far in the top. 10 of the greatest rappers of all time to me but you know so it's a, it's, a, it's a hard thing to me to, to even make that type of list yeah I've been seeing some of these lists like these magazines have been out for like years and years and they come on with these lists and they have these these kids these young kids making these lists and they never they don't know nothing about music yeah but I mean you know I feel like it's it's really a... everybody's entitled to it. your, your opinion is your opinion and I'm not mad at your opinion I'm not mad at you trying to come up and be I will a journalist this. none of that stuff I but you gotta this. know your history I will say this I, I, I have seen Jim saying something about <laughs> about Pusha right and I wanna say one thing about Pusha T that grinding record, right? To 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 have a record that don't have no music in it, and to captivate the entire hip hop community with a record that has no music in it, it's just a beat. You have to know how to rap, like, you know, I, that's that's just what I want to say. Because if you look at like Shan and you look at like even Chris, like with BDP, that's all they was rapping over just beats. It wasn't fact. no. One no music like a long to hide and all of this, just a beat. <clears throat> and for you to sit there and listen to somebody rap over a beat for three, four minutes, they gotta be nice. It can't even be no question about. I don't think. I don't think. I don't think was, he was questioning. Was, and we know Push is nice. Like, I mean, I don't think that was. That, I mean, that I, was I, the, I didn't hear that part. I didn't him say. <laughs> I, I'm not hearing him say that. I'm hearing him say he don't deserve to be in the list. And I'm just like, I don't know, Doc. Like. You know, he he's doing something that I guarantee if you challenged 10 new rappers today, they would not be able to pull it off. Like, just rap over this beat. I'm not going to add no music. And go crazy. Just rap over this beat and make the world love it. I don't know how many people can do that. Like, I don't even think I could do that. Just rap over a beat. It ain't got no chords. It ain't got nothing in it. It's just going to be go, go, go. go, go. And you just got to do what you got to do. Just drums and percussion, right? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know a bunch of people that even have that mentality. Right. No auto tune, just you rap over this beat, and let's see what happens. That's not. That's not easy. And for anyone who took offense to me saying they shouldn't be able to make a list, man, go Google what percussion means. Is <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you if you and when you see it, you can be like, damn, maybe I'm not qualified to know. You know what I'm saying? What should no, be on just, this it's list? Just, it's just a, it's crazy. Like I, we was talking about this. Like I said, we were talking about this last night. If you don't know about something, don't even get in the conversation. That's the yeah. thing. Like that's the thing. If you don't know about it, don't get in the conversation. You ain't never heard a clue tape, then you might not even understand this whole interview. That's that's <laughs> it. That's it. Yo, man, God, thank you for coming through, Jermaine, no man. Yeah, yeah, man. We st we still got. We when you come back in town, we gotta do the podcast. We gotta talk about, you know, what I'm saying like all the cars from back in the days. When I came to your crib and the and the tree fell on your brand new Range Rover, Ooh. we gotta talk about all that stuff, man. Ooh. We got we got history to talk about. Yeah, we got you, stuff yeah, to talk you, about. Yeah, you know a lot. He was like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> wow. the tree fell on my Range Rover." Yeah, oh yeah. 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 He's I like, mean, yeah. You, "What you gonna do? It's Atlanta." He's, <laughs> like, he's like, "Don't worry, about it. we're taking a Ferrari to the club. Come on." Yeah, and yeah. It's all love. So, right, so let me say this, everybody. Make sure y'all come out to Webster Hall on the fourth, um, May fourth, right? Yeah, May the fourth. Um, it's gonna be and and. You know, now that I've done the show, I could tell people how the show is. The show is, um, I bring the studio to the, on the stage, and I actually show y'all how I made the album. I make the beats on the stage live, That's fire. so people watch it, and then we do, then we perform it. So, um, come out, check it out. Come see, out, and learn something, yeah, man. See, Young yeah, and tight. Come out, and learn something. Yeah. Jermaine Dupree, ladies and gentlemen, world famous DJ Clue Desert Storm. Yeah. Jermaine Dupree, Clue Radio. You know the vibe. Yeah.